Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Live from Karbala uh, with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. Uh, Insha'Allah, uh, we will discuss and we have discussed in the previous episodes the most emphasized topics within the Holy Quran uh, with our respected uh, guest, Sayyid Hussein Al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. Nashkarullah. Alhamdulillah. I mean, uh, respected viewers, I, as you can see, we're in between uh, the two holy shrines of Mount Hussein and Abbas, peace be upon them. And Bin Haramain is, mashallah, is, is very crowded. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a night like this. Um, as I mentioned, Sayyidina, we have discussed the most emphasized topics uh, within the Holy Quran. But tonight specifically, we are going to discuss a very significant topic, uh, which is racism. Uh, as we all know, the life of any any person or property is very sacred uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah even mentions in the Holy Quran of mankind we have created you from male and female and we have made you into tribes and nations in akramakum and Allah yatqakum the one who is no, most noble to Allah subhanahu wa or with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most is, pious is the most pious we learn from that verse uh, from chapter 43 verse uh, uh, 13 is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying whether you're Muslim or not Muslim whether you're black or white or whatever color or from any creed or faith he's specifically saying all mankind is equal um, this goes in with uh, the current shooting in Charleston I mean how do we combat uh, such racism بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. Uh, if we examine the history of the United States of America for the past two to three years, uh, we have seen certain events that are very tragic and that stem from racism mm -hmm. in the past two three years we have seen that black people some black people in the United States of America African Americans who have been killed and their only crime is that they are African American their only crime is that their the skin of their color is black and that's they, it and they say it out loud I mean, because you're black that's what we're doing a couple of days ago in Charleston, South Carolina, we saw a young white American mm -hmm. enter into a, an African church, a black church, and shoot several members of that church, killing nine, including the pastor. Yeah. Including the pastor. Nine people at a church, at a house of God, at a house of worship, on a day that they're worshiping. They're not conspiring. They weren't there making plans of throwing down the government. Peaceful people gathering at a church to pray in their own way. In their own way. And this is the last of these events. The, the most recent, yeah. not last. A couple of days these ago. Events will continue. Mm -hmm. These events will continue. Uh, this is the most recent of these events. Yeah. A couple of months ago in Ferguson, we saw a young black uh, teenager, yeah. I believe 16 years old, yeah. was shot down by a police officer because he was afraid he had a, he thought he was carrying a gun. After that, we saw several events. Within the past couple of years, we saw many of these events, many of these events. Young black people being shot, being killed only because they were deemed as a threat. When we look at the history of the West, especially the United States of America, we see that it's, it's full of racism, full of racism. The West claims to be modernized. They laugh at us, third world countries. Yeah. There are third world countries in their eyes. They laugh at us. They claim that they are modernized. They claim that they have human rights. They fight for human rights. In fact, they even try to bring human rights to other countries. 
with all of these technological uh, advancements, they've reached the moon, they're almost going to reach Mars. Mm -hmm. However, they still, they still don't have respect for fellow human beings. Yeah. Just because that other human being is black, African American, or Hispanic. This tells you something about the civilization, this culture. They're reaching other planets. They're discovering, they're almost going to discover life on Mars. All of these technological advancements. But when it comes to ethics and morals, mm -hmm. they haven't advanced. Yeah. The same racism that existed 200, 300 years ago in the United States of America and in Europe, it exists still today. And sometimes they blame, they blame it on Muslims. After they shot down the person, oh, he was Muslim. And, uh, but did you hear anyone calling this white young man who shot the black people? Did you hear on the news being, uh, him being called a terrorist? They addressed him as a, a teenager who shot them. A teenager and saying, th they'll make up uh, stories yeah. that he was depressed, that he was on antidepressants. They don't address him by his, by his he's religion. He's not a terrorist. Yeah. He's not a Christian terrorist. Uh, he's not a Christian terrorist. When, in, when a crazy Muslim anywhere else in the world kills someone, immediately he's a Muslim terrorist. Yeah. But when a white... Christian person kills is not a Christian terrorist. Anyhow, that's that's besides the story. This is racism. In the United States of America, they got rid of slavery after the Civil War. Yeah. Less than 200 years ago. Less than 200 years ago, they got rid of the slavery. Up to less than 100 years ago. Less than 100 years ago. In the 1920s, 30s, 40s. Black people were segregated. Even after they yeah. were emancipated, they yeah. were free, they were segregated. White people went to, to one school, black people went to another school. Even in buses? Buses. On buses, they were not allowed to share buses. Yeah. They were not even allowed to share water fountains in public areas. There was a water fountain for white people, there was another water fountain for, for, black, for people. black people. Churches. Till now, Til now, til yeah. now there's white churches, there's black churches. This is supposed to be in a country, the most powerful country. Of freedom. The most advanced country. Yeah. The country that screams about human rights and modernity and technology. And in the United States of America, we saw uh, civil rights leaders that tried to bridge the gap and bring white people and black people together, like Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. <clears throat> like Malcolm X. These men, they tried their best to bring people together, but they couldn't. Even Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, thank you. Now there's a black president in the United States of America. The president, President Barack Obama, was black. Mm -hmm. But this took them how long? How long did it take them in order to accept a black person sitting in the Oval Office? Even there, there, there's Even logic the behind that. Yeah. And even now that he's agenda. president, he's suffering from a lot of prejudice. It is, yeah. He's he is. still suffering from a lot of prejudice and bias. And there's a lot of people that even threatened to kill him because he's a black man sitting in the Oval Office being the president of the United States of America. Thus, racism exists. Racism exists in the West. In the words of the president himself, President Barack Obama, two days ago he spoke. These are ex his exact words. He said that racism exists in the DNA of Americans. Yeah. It's in the DNA of America. That means it will continue. That's unfortunate. It con will continue. The white people in America, they look down at black people just because of their color. They feel that they're God, they feel that they're God's chosen people. And the rest should be below them. Lower them. You know, there's a sensitive word. We yeah. call it the N word. This is the. Yeah. This word has. It carries a lot of history. It does, yeah. Because black <clears throat> slaves, they were called with that, with that word. For black people, this word that is banned, you can't say this word out in public. And out of respect for African Americans, we will not say it either. This word has a lot of history. It reminds them of, 
of, uh, of their history in America, how they were taken by force from Africa and brought to America and sold as slaves and in Europe as well, yeah. just because of their color. Just because of their color. That is why we see that a lot of African Americans, they come towards Islam. The most amount of people that convert to Islam is African Americans. Why? All kinds of people convert to Islam. White, black, Hispanic, European, Caucasian, Asian. But the, if you look at the ratios, the ethnicity that has the most amount of conversion to Islam mm -hmm. is African American. Why? Because when they look at the history of the West and how the West treated them with all of this racism, they're, 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 they despise the West, Western yeah. civilization. And when they look at Islam, as we shall see, Inshallah. Uh, how Islam combated racism, mm -hmm. immediately they're drawn. Immediately they're drawn. I remember in 1992, mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, the famous Los Angeles riots. I don't know if you remember or not. Maybe some of my dear viewers remember this incident. In 1992, we have the famous LA riots, the Los Angeles riots. I remember because I was living in the United States. I was living in Los Angeles mm -hmm. because of a black man by the name of Rodney King. Mm -hmm. He was taken, he was stopped, I believe on the freeway. Uh, he was stopped by a police car. He was taken out and he was beaten by five police officers. Yeah, he I was heard about beaten, that. heavily beaten, almost died. I don't think he died. This is, this is over 20, 20 something years ago, 23, 24 years ago. After that, black people went on riots. For a couple of days, Los Angeles was full of riots. There were streets that police officers were afraid to go on because it, it, fury, it, it really uh, brought and made people furious. Black people made them furious that you're a country that claims to have human rights. We are human people. Yeah. We're humans. Is this how you, and we saw the same thing in Ferguson. A couple of months ago when a, a young teenager, a black teenager was shot down, was killed. People went out in the streets. There were riots. Because racism is not coming to an end in the West, in the United States of America. And here, the message of Islam is. Mm -hmm. We see, we also see, there's one, um, I read an article about uh, a year ago when I was in university. Uh, there was a woman, a black woman, walking in a rich neighborhood. I'm not going to say which country, which city, uh, but close to where I, where I live. Uh, she was walking into a rich neighborhood and a policeman pulled over and asked her, what are you doing here? She refused to, to answer because, uh, you know, as, as w when we live there, we have, we have freedom. If we, we, we choose not to answer. And she didn't answer to him. So they stopped and beat her. She, and she almost died when taken to... Uh, to trial, they just freed the, the two cops that, that beat her. I mean, we, we, we see that uh, racism uh, plays a significant role there. Uh, but how does the Quran uh, combat uh, racism? The Quran, from day one, it combated racism. Mm -hmm. It made sure that racism does not come inside Islam. This is one of the things that Islam tried to abolish from day one. Mm -hmm. The Quran says, Ya Ayyuhannas, O people, and this is not just to Muslims. Mm -hmm. The Quran is making a big declaration. For Muslims and non Muslims. Oh, oh people. <laughs> we created you from men and women, from males and females. <laughs> and we made you into clans and tribes so that you may meet each other, introduce, introduce each other to, to one another. And then, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The most honorable, the mm -hmm. most noble of you, mm -hmm. the best of you, are those who have piety. Mm -hmm. are those who have piety. Immediately, Islam puts a standard. Mm -hmm. It puts a criteria. Who's the best? Who are the most honorable? Who deserve the most respect? The Arab, Quraysh, uh, European, Persians, who? The Quran immediately says, it's piety, it's actions. 
piety is those who fear Allah, or those who work for Allah, or those who do the most good deeds. Piety comes back to actions. Mm -hmm. Meaning skin color is nothing. It means nothing. That is why we always say Islam is colorblind. Islam is colorblind. Islam doesn't distinguish between white and black. Yeah. Islam says, what's your actions? What are your actions? What are your actions? What have you done? You will be judged based on that. Based on your actions. It's about piety. It's about deeds. It's about actions. It's about how close to you, you are to Allah. You could be from Mecca, from Quraysh, from Bani Hashim, and have absolutely no respect. Like Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab was the uncle of Rasulullah mm -hmm. Yeah, we believe he's going to hell because he was a disbeliever. He disbelieved in Allah. He rejected the message of, of his nephew Rasulullah. We believe that he has no position in paradise. While Salman al-Farisi, yeah. who came from Persia, Bilal al-Habashi, who came, from, who came from Ethiopia, definitely are in paradise. They're not from Quraysh, they're not from Mecca, yet they have such a high status and level because of their actions, mm -hmm. because of their deeds. There's not a single verse in the Quran that mentions the Arab people are better than others. The people of Mecca are better than others. White people are better than black people. Not a single word. Mm -hmm. In another verse, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Habil tells his brother, Qabil, that Allah will only accept from the pious people. Allah, when it comes to good deeds, He doesn't favor one group of an mm -hmm. or over another. He accepts the good deeds of the Arab, and reject the good deeds of, for example, Persians, or Europeans, or black people. No. Allah accepts the good deeds of all those who do good deeds, of those who have piety, whether you're, you could be from Arabia, or mm -hmm. you could be from Africa, or you could be from America, wherever you are. The Quran is colorblind, absolutely. What, 100% colorblind. 100% colorblind. Mm -hmm. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى Surely believers are brothers. They're all brothers. They're equal. You could be African, Arabian, American, Pakistani, Hindu. They're all brothers. They're all from one family. When you're brothers, that means you're all from one family. Have you seen one brother is better than another brother? Brothers are all the same. Brothers are all equal. All believers are brothers. Thus the Quran has taken a strong stand in addition to the Prophet and the Ahim Bayt. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's significant as well because we see at al Bayt, especially Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa um, going with what you said, the famous, um, if you will, someone that they were racist to was Bilal al-Habashi. I mean, he was a very significant character in history, in Islamic history. And even um, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu states, لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَلِيَدِينِ You have your own faith, your own way of life, and, all, and I have mine. So th th there's no force into, uh, into a religion or something. But uh, how did Prophet Muhammad and the Ahlul Bayt uh, fight against terrorism? Uh, racism. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi stated several hadith that they're still powerful till today. Very powerful mm -hmm. words. In one of his narrations, he states, لا فضل لعربي على عجمي إلا بالتقوى. Mm -hmm. إلا بالتقوى. That an Arab person has mm -hmm. no virtue over a non-Arab. Ajami doesn't necessarily mean Persian. Mm -hmm. Arabi is anyone, uh, Ajami is anyone who is not Arab, mm -hmm. non Arab. You could be a Westerner, you could be from Persia, you could be from Africa. Rasulullah says, La fadla li Arabiyin ala Ajami illa bi taqwa. 
Arab people have no virtue, no superiority over a non-Arab except through piety. piety. If, he's, if he has more piety, yes. If he's more religious, closer to Allah, then yes. But just because of his lineage, Mm -hmm. Just because he's from Arabia, from the Arabian Peninsula, because of his language, because he's from Quraysh, it's nothing. It's nothing. Lineage has absolutely has absolutely no role. It's mm -hmm. about actions. And another and, and another narration. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah says, "Kullukum min Adam, wa Adam min You're all from Adam. You're all from Adam. And, and Adam is from what? He's from sand. So why are you why are you being arrogant? Yeah. Why are you saying I'm greater than I'm better than this person and I'm I'm better than that? Arab people think they're better than Persians and Persians think they're better than Arab. Westerners think they're better than Middle Easterners. Middle Easterners think they're better than so on and so forth. Yeah. We have this. There's racism everywhere. Yeah. Quran says, uh, <laughs> Rasulullah says, "Kullukum min Adam wa Adam min Tarab." You're all from Adam. Meaning you're all from the same tree. You all go back to the same father. You're all brothers. You're all family members. In a family, there's there's no hierarchy. There's no hierarchy when when they're all brothers. There's no hierarchy between them. There's no one over the other. And another hadith: "An nasu sawasiya ka'asnan al mishd." People are equal, the same way that the teeth of a comb. A comb, mm -hmm. a comb that we brush with, the teeth, the teeth of the, this comb, the they're strength. all equal. They're all same height. Not rigid. A comb, I sent. It's not rigid. You don't see one teeth is is, uh, is taller than the yeah. other, or, or higher than the other. They're all the same length. And nasu sawasiya ka'asnan al mish. They're all the same. They're all on the same level. They're all on the same level. We see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, when he would stand to pray. Mm -hmm. His companions were all from, were, were a variety. He had standing behind him Salman al Faris, mm -hmm. Persian. He had Bilal al Habashi standing behind him in Salah. He had Suhaib al Rumi from the Roman Empire. He had come and accepted Islam. He had Abu Dhar al Ghifari. From the Arabian Peninsula. Arabian. Hujr ibn Adi. Yeah. Al Kindi from Kufa, from Iraq. These were all various nationalities, yet they stood side by side, shoulder shoulder to shoulder. Brothers. And Islam saw them as all equal. Rasulullah saw them all as equal. He didn't favor his Arab companions over the non Arab companions. Mm -hmm. Never. We never heard of this. Yes, he favored Imam Ali over all the other companions, and not because Imam Ali is his cousin, because Imam Ali is Imam Ali. Yeah. Imam Ali became Imam Ali with his actions, with his piety, with his sincerity, with his righteousness. Who Allah loves and his messenger loves. Because Allah chose him. Yeah. Not because of his ethnicity. Another thing that the Rasulullah established to destroy racism is the day of brotherhood mm -hmm. and this occurred in Ramadan he chose he coupled two men one from the Ansar and one from the Muhajirin one from the migrants and one from the help migrants meaning the people of Mecca, mm -hmm. Mecca. the Ansar people of Medina. Medina he paired them into two and made them into brothers he made them into brothers and he chose randomly, randomly. He chose randomly. They could have been from different ethnicities. Mm -hmm. They could have been from different nationalities and languages. But th he made them into brothers. He made them into brothers. Meaning they're all equal. And they were all equal. Rasulullah never allowed racism. Never allowed racism to take place. In fact, he gave the adhan. Adhan is something very special. Yeah. The Adhan is, um, it's basically like the press secretary. It's the one who speaks for Rasulullah. It's the one who calls people to prayer. He gave that honor to whom? To Bilal. To Bilal. This was a great honor. 
There were people that were envious. Yeah. They were jealous. Why is it also he couldn't find anyone better than Bilal? Yeah. Bilal is black. Bilal is from Ethiopia, from Africa. That is exactly why Rasulullah chose him. Yeah. Because he is black. So I differentiate. Because to say that this black man He's no different from you. Equal. In fact, he might be better than you. Yeah. Bilal, he had a problem with pronunciation. Mm -hmm. His his sheen was seen. Instead of saying Ashhadu, he would say Ashhadu. People that came and complained to him, they said Ya Rasul. First of all, he's black. Second of all, he can't even pronounce right. Choose someone else. He said no. She seen Bilal in and Allah Sheena. The scene of Bilal, Allah counts it as a what? As a sheen. As a sheen. He insisted that Bilal remains as the prayer caller, the one who calls for prayer, the Adhan. Not just that. After the conquest of Mecca, mm -hmm. when Allah and his companions went to Mecca and he destroyed all the idols of the Kaaba. The Adhan was stated for the very first time inside Masjid Al-Haram and on top of the Kaaba. And who, who went up to say the Adhan? Bilal. Bilal. One of the people of Mecca, the people of Mecca, Quraysh, who had just become Muslim. When Rasulullah forgave them for persecuting him, for hurting him, for killing his uncle, for killing some of his top companions, he forgave them. They became Muslim. They all converted into Islam and Surah Al As tells us. Surah Al Nas. Ida Ja'an Surah Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Ida Ja'an Surah Allahi Wal Fat. Wa Ra'ayta Al Nas Yad Khuluna Fi Din Al Lahi Afwaja. They all became Muslim. It was time for Salah. Rasulullah told Bilal, Go on top of the Kaaba. The Kaaba was very significant. Yeah. It was a place of worship, not just for Muslims, for Christians, for Jews. For, Even for idol worshippers. Uh, for idol worshippers. Yeah. It was a significant place. For idol worshippers, it was a very uh, holy place. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah asked Bilal to go and stand on the Kaaba and say the Adhan. Some of them, when they saw Bilal, one of them said, didn't Rasulullah find someone else other than this black crow? You see, they still had racism. But Rasulullah wanted to destroy these racist sentiments in them. That's why he chose Bilal. Another one from the people of Mecca. He said, thank God my father is dead. Because if he was alive now, if he was alive till today, he would have died right this moment. If he would have seen a black man on top of the, of the Kaaba. Why is such hatred? I mean, I don't understand. Racism. Racism. It's part of human nature. To feel superior. Yet Islam came and tried to destroy these sentiments. That whether you like it or not, I will choose a black man to go up and say the Adhan. Because this black man, don't look at his skin. Look mm -hmm. at his heart. Look at his deeds. Look at his piety. This black man is better than you. He's better than you. He's from Ethiopia, from Africa, and he believed in me. But you, the people of Mecca, and I'm from you, you rejected me. This black man is better than you. This is only Rasulullah. And the Ahlul Bayt, they follow him as well. I mean, to tie into that, on the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, when uh, his name just lost Joan. Name, Joan, and there's another one, Abbas, when they fell, um, Imam Hussein, peace be upon them, came to them and did whatever he did to Ali al Akbar. He laid beside them and stayed there. He, one of them said, Ibn Rasulullah, you're doing something. Great. I mean, I'm not in. Uh, I'm not. I'm not worthy of such action. He said, "My, my skin color is different." Yet, yeah, Hussein, peace be upon him, did not differentiate between the, his companions, but between his own son. I mean, and someone else that had just embraced Joan, Islam. Joan, Mawla Abu, uh, Mawla Abu Dhar al -Ghifari. Joan was a black slave owned by Abu Dhar, mm -hmm. and then Imam Al Hassan bought him from Abu Dhar. And then Imam Hussein took him after his brother. Thus he was a slave for Imam Hussein. And he came all the way from Medina to Mecca, from Mecca to Iraq with Imam Hussein. 
on the night before Ashura, I believe, or the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein told him, you're free to go. You're free. You don't need to stay with us. He said, why? Joan. He said, because we're all about to die. Yeah. We're about to be killed. And you're, you are our servant. And what, what? there's no reason for you to you've be done killed. Your duty. They're, you've done your duty. And they're here to kill us. They're mm -hmm. here to fight us. So I don't want you, I don't want your blood to be spilled. He said, Yama Rasulullah, I have good times, I'm with you. And, uh, but at bad times, you want me to abandon you? I will stay with you. Mm -hmm. I will stay. And he sought permission to fight. The Imam was hesitant, yet he gave him permission to fight. Joan enters the battlefield and he fights. When he died, when he was about to die, as you said, historians say that Imam Hussein did something with him that he only did with his son Ali al Akbar. Only these two men. He put his cheeks on the cheeks of Joan. He put his cheeks on the cheeks of Joan, this black man. He was a black slave, yet he was more honorable than others. He was more honorable than others. Yes, Imam Hussein alayhi salam treated him better than he treated all of his other children. Yeah. Except his son, Ali al Akbar. This was, this was the Ahlul Bayt. The Ahlul Bayt followed the footsteps of Rasulullah. The same way that Rasulullah fought uh, racism, the Ahlul Bayt fought racism. Imam Ali alayhi salam, I'd like to go back to Imam Ali before uh, Imam Hussein. Imam Ali, when he came to power, it was a very difficult time for him. One of the major difficulties that he faced was that he had to uh, bring equality back to the welfare system. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the ones before him, specifically Umar ibn Khattab and Uthman, they made a difference. Umar ibn Khattab began giving double the amount from the welfare to Arabs than he would give to non-Arab, to Persians. So if uh, someone Arab or from Quraysh was enlisted to receive money from the welfare, and someone, for example, from Persia was enlisted, the one from Quraysh would receive double the amount than the Persian man, even though they were both Muslims. It's unfortunate. But he was the first to make discrimination. He was the first to bring discrimination into Islam. Into Islam. Followed by, and by the way, the one who killed Umar ibn Khattab was who? Abu Lu'la, a Persian man. And this was one of the reasons why he killed Umar ibn Khattab, because of this discrimination. The discrimination that he made between Arab and non Arab. Mm -hmm. And this is in all history books. Yeah. This is in all history books. In Al Isti'ab, in uh, Al Asaba, Fi Ma'arafat al Sahaba, Al Isti'ab, Fi Ma'arafat al Ashab. They all mention this in the biography of Umar ibn Khattab. Mm -hmm. Uthman, Uthman, his, his uh, financial policies were even worse. Uthman favored his family members. Yeah. Bani Umayyah. Bani Umayyah. Whoever was from Bani Umayyah received more than others would receive. He gave, I don't know, how much land to this person from Bani Umayyah. How much money to this person from Bani Marwan. All of his family members from Bani Marwan and Bani Umayyah, he gave them lots of privileges, lands, money, positions. Mm -hmm. This was discrimination. This was racism. Yeah. Just because they're from Bani Umayyah, from a specific tribe and clan. Imam Ali alayhi salam had to come and eradicate them. Make them all equal. Make them all equal. And this upset some. Those who were benefiting from the previous policies that we were receiving double the amount. Now Imam Ali made them all equal. Some people were upset. Yeah. One day, two women came to receive money from the welfare system of Imam Ali. A Qurashi woman from Quraysh and a non-Qurashi woman. They received the same amount. The woman from Quraysh, she came and she said, Ya Amir I have a complaint. Mm -hmm. You treated us equally. SubhanAllah. She said, SubhanAllah. Imam Ali picked up sand in both hands he said ya amatullah which sand is greater the sand or the sand you're both sand kullukum min adam wa adam min you're both daughters of adam and, Ad and adam is from sand is one sand better than the other sand 
Subhanallah. Thus, the Ahlul Bayt also had to combat racism. And I'll conclude with this. Mm -hmm. A hadith by Imam Zain al Abidin. Imam Zain al Abidin was seen by Abu Darda. Mm -hmm. Or someone else. Maybe my memory sometimes. Uh, I might not remember the mm -hmm. exact name of the narrator, but this is the story. Mm -hmm. One narrator saw Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam and uh, it wasn't Abu Darda because Abu Darda was at the time of Imam Al was someone else. This narrator saw Imam Zain Abidin alayhi salam. I believe it was in the month of Ramadan inside Masjid Al Haram, mm -hmm. performing tawaf, one tawaf after the other, from the beginning of the night all the way till Sahar, till the time of Sahur. He kept on performing tawaf, crying, begging begging Allah to rescue him from hellfire and put him into heaven. This man came to Imam Zain Abidin. He said, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, you do this, you beg Allah and you shout and you cry. What about sinful sinful people yeah. like me? What should we do? You are the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, the, the son of Fatima al Zahra, the son of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. You have nothing to worry about. We should be more worried. Imam Zain Abidin said this. He said, Ya Hada, Ya Atruk Hadith Abi wa Ummi wa Jaddi. Leave my father and grandfather and grandmother and mother out of this. Khalaq Allah al Jannah Tariman Ata'a, Walau Kana Abdan Habashiya. Allah created heaven even if it's for a slave from Abyssinia. From Abyssinia. From Africa. Africa. وَخَلَقَ اللَّهُ النَّارَ لِمَنْ عَصَاهُ وَلَوْ كَانَ سَيِّدًا قُرَشِيًّا And Allah created hellfire even if you're from Quraysh. It's not about lineage. The master of Quraysh. Even if you're from the, from the ma a master from Quraysh. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what lineage you are, who, or which lineage you come from, who's your father, mother, or grandfather. It's about what you do. Yes, in Islam, even an African slave can be better than the people of Quraysh. In these ways, Islam tried to combat racism. Now, was Islam successful? There's no racism? No. Obviously, there is. There is. Even in Muslim areas, in Muslim communities, even here in Iraq, in other places, there are, there is racism. Yeah. However, compared to the West, compared to the United States of America, our racism is not that great. Mm -hmm. Because our religion tried to reduce the amount of racism, and it did, it did reduce. Hopefully, these, these words and this discuss, discussion could help to solve this major problem. Inshallah that exists in the West and that could be especially in the recent couple of years, in the past couple of years, that racism has skyrocketed. Hopefully Islam could bring a new solution. Inshallah. That people can learn from this, these ethics and morals and values from Islam, that Islam is a religion that is anti-racism and try to abolish racism. I mean, because it destroys human life. It's not about you know, hurting someone, you know, hurting their feelings but to actually destroy someone physically and ending up in death just like in Charleston. Uh, so inshallah, respected viewers, I mean, a very touching topic, I always say that Zain Al-Qazmini. Inshallah, we can learn from this to not be racist, to treat everyone equally, whether he's black, white, Christian, Muslim, uh, whatever they may be. Uh, so respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, I would like to thank you for watching and staying tuned. Um, for any viewers who didn't get the chance to view this episode uh, or the previous episodes can log on to our YouTube channel at Imam Hussein TV 3 or join the discussion with Sayyid Hussein Qazwini by asking him questions um, at our uh, social networking websites Instagram, Telegram, Google+, Facebook, Twitter uh, Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina Allah khalikum inshaAllah